Welcome back to the channel. This is Dave, Broken Quattro's here. We are working on the Titan car again today. And here's what we're gonna try to install on it. So, uh, we got the rear KWs, the rear TE37s, the rear five lug conversion, uh, including new discs. Uh, I also got a set of the Motorsport Hardware stud kit. Uh, I've ran these on a lot of my different cars. Really enjoy them. Um, nice to have. Allows you to run any kind of spacers or change up your stuff at any point in time. Um, hub centric rings for the wheels. We got the top mounts for our KWs. Uh, these are the sway bar links. And we have some Pore 13 caliper paint. Um, if we're feeling really good and ambitious and everything goes according to plan, maybe we'll also take a minute to do that. So that's the plan. Um, car does have the front already converted to 5 by 112 rear still 4 by 108 So that's the next thing is finish up the uh, 5 by 112 bolt pattern conversion. And after that's done, we can start driving it. We can go get it aligned. We can start start getting things dialed in and ready for uh, phase two. So um, on to some work here. I'm gonna state for the record right now, it's like nine in the morning and it's already uh, 85. It's supposed to be a hundred degree day. So I don't know how far I'm gonna get on all this. Cause let's be honest, I'm a weakling. I don't like the heat. I'm getting old. It's not my thing. Okay, we just popped off the, uh, well, the wheel, the brake, the axle bolt, uh, a few things like that. Just kind of wanted to stop and talk for a second. So these are the caliper carriers here. You can see they're actually in really, really good shape. There's no tears in these boots. I am going to just brush them with a wire brush, and then I'm probably going to try to put that Pore 15 uh, caliper paint on it. I've never used this stuff, but I've used Pore 15 on other stuff and it's come out really well. Um, it is a red paint, so it'll kind of help match the fronts. I'm not going with a big brake kit for the moment, um, but it can be installed later down the road. I'm less concerned about it. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention, so uh, I didn't talk much about it, but the so I, I converted to 5x112. In the front, I used URS4 or URS6 hubs that are machined and pressed into the original housings. Um, because I went with a aftermarket or upgraded big brake kit, um, the calipers and carriers and stuff like that are less important. You can run stock calipers um, after you convert to 5x112, um, but one of the main reasons why I like to convert to 5x112 is because it opens up a lot more brake options and, and wheel options. Um, in the rear here, it's really easy. So um, the new hubs that I have over there on the table, they are five by one twelve, and they're from they're from the rear of a B five A four Quattro. Basically, what I can do is I can slap this setup with the B five A four rears with the new disc, and I can rerun my original calipers, original. Um, uh, carriers, everything on there in the rear will line up perfectly with this. And there's literally nothing I have to do to actually change, um, you know, as far as brakes go, I, it retains your original caliper. So it re retains original braking and also the original, um, uh, e-brake. So, so yeah, super, super simple kind of, you know, fit fitting and fix that you can do and have it up and running in no time since it's the exact same dimensions. And obviously these are readily available here in the US. Um, in the fronts, like I said, you can run an original S2 front disc. That'll work with the original G60 calipers, but you'd have to order those from Europe. They're expensive, they're a pain, and it's really not worth it. Uh, I've also re-drilled, so I've taken my standard 4x108 hub or discs in the front and re-drilled the 5x112 pattern on them. There is one wheel that, or one hole that'll have interference, but since it's a floating rotor, it's not critical. And I've done that while I waited or before I was able to get a big brake kit and do that. So it's always an option. 
But this is this is going to be the new setup that we'll take over there. We'll take that over there once we get the rest of it off and um, after we get the new suspension in place. So keep moving forward. Okay, so I've removed the lower ball joint bolt down behind here. I've removed this upper for the sway bar. Um, obviously brakes and everything. I've also loosened this bolt on the bottom of my tie rod. And um, so these are kind of wedge fit. And so it's, it's coming off nicely, but it's not gonna come out nicely. So what you need to do is apply pressure here. I have a couple different ways of doing that. Um, I might try really quickly since the jack is obviously right there, putting the jack under it and just see if it'll nicely pop out. Or um, if that doesn't work, I do have, I don't have it right here in front of me, but uh, it's basically a C-clamp that helps remove those and then you apply pressure here and it'll push it against this. And uh, I also have a pickle fork. Pickle fork's kind of last resort because pickle fork will normally tear this boot and everything's actually in really good shape. There was no vibration or no wobbling and there was no play in any of the components back here. So um, we're gonna try to be as gentle as humanly possible. So uh, we'll try the jack first since it's right there and see where that gets us. All right, uh, so what I did is I put the jack under here. Now everything else is still hooked up. All these bolts are still in place. Everything's still kind of holding tight and it's holding it in where it's supposed to be. I've jacked this up just a little bit and it's actually compressed the suspension a little bit. So there is pressure on here. Um, now you can see there's still that gap. That gap says that it is, hasn't released. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a couple wax with this dead blow um, while this is supporting the tie rod and all this is supporting here. So this should just help it drop down maybe, hopefully. Hopefully this works. If not, I'll have to go bigger. Uh, so I actually jacked it up just a little bit more and then I actually used a bigger motivator here and it clearly slipped right down. So now I can take out the jack, take out that bolt, take out these two bolts and take off this whole knuckle and hub assembly here. Next step is uh, castle nuts and top mounts. So, um, one thing I noticed, I thought in the past these worked perfectly. So this is the uh, ABS uh, sensor holder bracket and it fits how it should on here and the holes line up, but it's a different size hole and it's not threaded either. So that might have to wait, um, but we will take off this nut. We will put on our um, strut mount, or I'm sorry, our, yeah, our strut mount castle nut tool on here and move forward. I had to use both hands to do that, but uh, you don't need a spring compressor like you do in your OEM setups. Um, this isn't even cranked down all the way. I was able to compress it enough that I could get the castle nut on. Now we're gonna use the impact and put it on uh, completely so all right so you can tell that castle nut is definitely on there a lot better than it was just a second ago um, now I like to do it as much as I can while it's off the car and again this is just the castle nut tool um, pretty universal for a Volkswagen Audi these top mounts are known for failing um, I've had a bunch of the 034 ones fail on me. Uh, I have a different solution for the Ur Quattro, but um, this one we're just gonna go OEM-ish. These are male HD. I've actually had better uh, luck with these than a lot of the other stuff. So that's what we're gonna run for now. If they fail, they fail, and I replace them just like I would OEM or anything. Normally the rears, um, because they aren't articulating and turning with the wheels, uh, they tend to last a lot longer. Uh, it's the front ones that normally fail. Um, anyway, moving on. We've arrived at the delicate part of the log. I mentioned this in the first intro video, but these rear shelves 
are uh, extremely rare in this condition. Um, there's no cracks, there's no breaks, they're literally perfect. And of course, my strut mount is right here. So generally you have to remove this, get back behind the carpet here, and get your strut off. And so I'm gonna have to probably take some precautions to keep these um, safe and in the condition that they're in because replacements aren't easy to find or readily available. Um, but yeah, normally they're cracked here, they're cracked here, cracked here. So we're gonna go back inside the car and um, try to, we might have to do a lot of disassembly just to get them off. So we'll see. I ended up removing the shelf. Luckily it was only a few bolts and luckily somebody had already removed one of them for me. So uh, that gave me better access to the top mount here. Now we'll go ahead and toss the new strut in there. Um, this one just kind of fell out somewhere. And yeah, we'll put the new one in there and uh, be done with that side. Here it is. Pretty good fitment on the wheels and tires. Um, the wheels are 18 by eight um, Volk TE37s in native five by 112. They are, um, they are authentic, although they've been repainted and then someone stuck imitation stickers on them. Um, I was kind of curious how the black would look, so before I painted everything, I figured I'd run them, see if I like them. I think the black might actually look really, really good with um, with the Titan Gray. Uh, so we'll probably keep them black, but we'll probably have it redone and have it done nicer. And then we'll put on some original decals and we'll actually put them in the correct locations. Um, they do have original center caps though that are actually really nice. And yeah, so there, there's that side. Um, We'll do the other side and see where we get to. Side two went a lot better than side one. Um, after painting that first side, I actually like the paint. The paint actually, um, how do I don't say this? It's a nice thick coating and it actually sits on there really well and it levels itself out pretty well. So it actually looks decent. Um, so I think I'm gonna do the same on this side. Uh, my battery's charging on my drill for the wire wheel. So we gotta wait for that. Uh, I need to put the tie rod back on. That's not tight yet, but everything else is tight. Uh, also the ball joint bolt is not tight. Uh, everything else is uh, good to go. Oh, oh, this isn't tight either. Final torque on all that stuff, but um, I haven't adjusted height or anything like that. This is just however it came from KW, so I uh, might have to adjust that. I need to put back together stuff inside there. Um, we'll see. All right, so on this side of the car, I kind of try to speed up the process a little bit by uh, painting it while it's in place. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. And this is actually coat number two. I'm just trying to help the curing process. Not that it isn't hot out here already. I just thought a heat gun might help cure it and get it um, closer to where it needs to be. I'm kind of in a hurry at this point. So we're just trying to speed up the process as much as humanly possible without making it terrible. But like, it looks pretty decent for what it is. And I have so much left so you could probably do a lot of cars with this anyway um yeah wrapping things up almost almost done here Boom. 
Definitely not perfect, but not bad looking either. Especially considering the amount of time that went into it. So, got the Motorsports hardware studs on here, painted calipers, five lug obviously, new rotors, uh, new KWs installed. Everything's good to go over here. Put the wheel on. All right, done for the day. We are five lugged all the way around. Got the Volks on there. Got calipers that are all red, all front and back. Yeah, this one needs to come down a little bit. We want to match the front. Front's just about right. Might be a tad low, but pretty close to where I want it. Now I just need to clean up all my mess and go to a dinner party. So, let's do this.